Hello, welcome back to Cloud and Web Developer. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the date picker format so you can have calendars appearing on your front end and the user can select dates from them. In this case, I'm going to do a, a date range and then I'm going to show you how to manipulate and get that information across different pages on your same site. This is all going to be done in Flask templates in Python. Uh, why am I doing this? Because I was working on this this week and I got stuck with it for a while and I couldn't find a YouTube video that exactly addressed this issue. So I'm going to make one myself so you don't have to. Okay, so the first thing we need to do as always is come onto your uh, Visual Studio Code or whatever it is that you're using. And I'm going to uh, start by creating a new terminal and I'm going to install a new virtual environment. So virtual env dash p python 3.7 vemv and that creates the environment right there and then i just have to do dot vemv bin activate and i'm inside my virtual environment i might do the font a little bit bigger for you guys cool and then the next thing i'm i'm going to install a flask of course pip install flask pip install we're going to use flask wtf uh in fact with flask wtf let's do sudo because sometimes with without sudo it doesn't really work well so let's just do that as well and then finally pip install wtf forms what the forms cool well it's a smart it's already installed in my environment but that's what you would do uh, normally okay cool now let's start making some files here on the root folder we are going to have a app dot py which is what our server is going to be running and then to use jinja templates remember you need a folder may uh, call templates and then inside that folder we're going to have three files uh, one is going to be the base.html which is going to be shared by index.html and also i'm going to make one that is called date.html so what i'm going to be doing is that on index.html i'm going to display the two calendars and a button and then you can click on those calendars and when you submit the button you're going to move on to date html and html all it's going to do is show you those dates so to show that the information actually traveled around your site all right so let's get started with um let's say with base html which is the easy part so all right that's all we need for and i actually wrote this in date html my apologies it's in beige html all right and now that we have done that, let's go, let's go into app py, which is where like the, the interesting things are going to be. So the first thing we need to do is start importing our libraries. Submit field. Okay. And then let's make an actual app. Flask name. And then for the forms to work, would you need to have a key and then you put app config brackets secret key and normally in here you would put some kind of string that is not uh, too easy to guess so I'm just gonna put some random characters in there right and then uh, the way these forms work is that you have to cre create a class so I'm gonna call it info form and then you put flask form inside the parameters and you're going to start putting essentially the, the fields that you want your form to have. So in this case, as I'd say, it's just going to be two calendars. I'm going to call start date equals, it's a date field and a label that says start date. And then the format in which the date is going to be presented. And then optionally, you can have validators. And in this case, I'm going to validators and I'm going to use the data require. That means that the user has to provide some kind of data for the form to be able to be submitted. 
this is optional you don't have to but just for illustration purposes let's leave it at that another similar field so i'm just going to copy paste this line but this one is going to be called end date end date uh, this one should be a hyphen or an equal sign have to be always very mindful with the syntax in in forms and Jinja templates in general because I find the error messages sometimes are not very uh, clear when you uh, mess up something and the submit field is going to be the button okay let's start making some routes so app dot route let's make one for your index uh, methods it's going to be get and post some browsers don't recognize if you use lowercase and get them post so i always put them in capital letters index function and then in here i'm gonna be creating a form out of the form class that we created uh, above and then if form dot validate form validate on submit which means that if the form is valid when you click that button then do this we're going to use the session um library from from flask because this one is what allows the data to be preserved between different pages so i'm going to call it start date and this is the way you actually get data from the form so form dot start date dot data if you use forms a lot you're going to see that start date dot data form dot data is very useful session and date and date dot data and then if the form is valid you're going to be redirect to the date html that we haven't created or implemented yet and if not render a return render template and we are going to just send those, send those back to the index which is a let I me mean, just reload this page essentially and you send form equals form so you once again send back that form nice now i'm going to make another route for the date um, the once you have that information the dates that you want to display you're going to be sent to this endpoint which is called date And once again, I'm going to be using the sessions. So grab those this um, information from session start date, and do the same for end date. Assign to a new variables here. And finally, return render template date.html right i think it looks pretty good and finally for my app to run main and if that's correct app.run and we're gonna put it in debug mode so i don't have to be reloading the page if there's any errors probably there'll be some typo somewhere so so let's see now the next thing we need to do is to finish implementing our html files so let's go to let's go to index i say will be more, make more sense if we're in index right so we're going to extend base html and this is where i'm going to put my content starting with the body tag And I'm gonna put my form action method is post and name just call I call it my form and then let's start with something very important this is something I actually got stuck for a little bit form dot 
token. If you don't have this, your form is just not going to work. And it won't really tell you why. So just be mindful of that. And then we start putting our fields. Form.startDate.Label. And then right next to it, form.startDate. And then I'm going to put class equals date picker. And this is going to be the calendar. And you also need form dot hidden tag, and that's a function. So you also need that hidden tag. So just be aware of these idiosyncrasies of uh, WTSF forms, because it can give you a headache uh, if you if you don't, like it did for me this week. And finally, the submit button at the very end here. A little space, close your form. Close the body tag. And close your block for content block. Okay, let's save that. What else I need to do? I think I need to do now date, HTML. That's it's a little bit shorter. So once again, uh, extends your base.html. And then within this tag, I'm gonna take advantage of the session tag once again, session. And in here, uh, make sure that you uh, type with the brackets and the single quotes, because that's also something that I wasn't doing and it wasn't really giving me much feedback about what was going on. But this is how we're gonna be pulling the data from the other page into this endpoint. Okay, so I think that's looking not too shabby. So I'm going to now try to run my server with Python app.py. Okay, so now that I fix all the tiny little typos here and there, once again, let's try this. Select the date range from the 6th September to the 23rd of September. Submit and voila, is here, September 6th, Sunday. This is the full format that uh, the date picker gives you. But now with this form, you can actually start using this date around in your project. So if you need to, I actually had to manipulate this date to match a SQL database. So I had to do some like Python gymnastics to make like the date um, interchange and different uh, syntax and everything. But it was so much easier now that I had access to this session start date and session end date. And that's how you would add calendars with date picker to your applications in Flask. I hope this was helpful. If you like it, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, and follow me on my social media. I'm going to be posting these tutorials every week. This is Carlos for Cloud and Web Developer. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.